Hello, hello, it's Thumplet here. Here's an item on trigonometry. Evaluate the product of sines. Sine 10 degrees, sine 30 degrees, sine 50 degrees, sine 70 degrees. As usual, pause this video if you'd like to give this item a try. But if you're done, let us dive into the solution. Now upon primary inspection of these angles, we know that 30 is a special angle, but for the 10 degrees, 50 degrees, and 70 degrees, there isn't really a nice way for us to evaluate the sine of those three angles. So, all right, let's set, let, uh, let's set the sine 30 degrees aside because we know sine 30 degrees is one half, and let's just focus on the sine 10 degrees, sine 50 degrees, and sine 70 degrees. There might be a nice way to do this, probably uh, the use of some trigonometric identities, and we kind of manipulate this into like a nice expression and hopefully it turns out to be good. Now that's typically the strategy that we want to use because there isn't really a nice way for us to get like the exact value of the sine and cosine or like uh, the, trigon uh, the trigonometric functions of like any non-special angle. So we would resort to like manipulation and stuff. So here we would use the following. Now I'm gonna change them all to cosines for now. So all the sines I'm gonna convert it to cosines via the co-function identity so cosine of 90 degrees minus x, that's going to equal to sine x. Now, a nice representation of this, although not the appropriate, not the best um, proof of this, but we can kind of see that 10, 50, and 70, they're all acute angles. So we can kind of use the fact that we can use um, the Sokotoa or the sine, cosine, and tangent ratios inside the right triangle. For example, if I, if I were to take the sine of theta, so sine of theta would be a over C, opposite over hypotenuse. Now, if I, if I were to take the cosine of this angle, which is 90 minus theta, because uh, we have a right triangle here, the cosine of 90 minus theta would be the same thing, A over C. Therefore, sine of theta, it's going to be equal to cosine of 90 degrees minus theta. So that's just um, a little bit of visual representation to help us understand um, this identity over here. Anyways, so the sine 10 degrees over here becomes... Uh, cosine 80, sine 50 becomes cosine 40, and sine 70 degrees becomes cosine 20 degrees. And then just uh, rearranging the terms with the commutative property of multiplication, we have something like that. Now, there is a nice pattern here with the angles. So 20 degrees, 40 degrees, and 80 degrees. Take note that 20 degrees, I multiply it by 2, I would get my 40 degrees. And then same thing from 40 to 80, I multiply it by 2 to get 80 degrees. Therefore, we would generally use the trick here of multiplying sine 20 degrees to the numerator and the denominator because we will be able to use the double angle identity. So recall the double angle identity, uh, but divide both sides by 2, we're going to end up with uh, this equation. So sine x cosine x, that's going to be equal to 1 half sine 2x. All right, now 1 half sine 2x I, um, sorry, for sine 20 degrees, cosine 20 degrees, that's going to become 1 half sine 40 degrees, as you can see here. Now, something interesting comes up because I have a sine 40 degrees, cosine 40 degrees. I guess it makes sense because of the kind of like geometric sequence of angles that we see uh, from the given. So we would apply the same thing again. So sine 40 degrees, cosine 40 degrees, that's just the same as 1 half sine 80 degrees. All right, and then we additionally see the sine 80, cosine, sine 80 degrees, cosine 80 degrees. So we're going to apply this uh, double angle trick again. So sine 80 degrees, cosine 80 degrees, that's just the same as saying 1 half sine of 160 degrees. And then here we have like another identity for sine. So sine 180 degrees minus x, that's going to be equal to sine x. So this is one of those nice identities. Again, you can expand the left-hand side to, uh, to verify that it is true. But that's going to be, um, I'm going to leave this to you. Now, since 160 degrees and 20 degrees, they are supplementary, this identity tells us that the sine of 160 and the sine of 20, they're the same. So I can actually cancel the 160, sorry, the cancel the sine 160 degrees and the sine 20 degrees, giving us 1 fourth times 1 half, and that gives us 1 eighth. We're not yet done, however. We only proven that the blue underlined terms, they multiply to be 1 eighth. 
and then the green term from our knowledge of special angles that's just equal to one half so our final answer should be the product of these two one half times one eighth and that's going to give us the answer of 1 over 16 and this will be our final answer hopefully you guys learned something new from this video and i'll see you in the next one bye bye